Hey Metal Maniacs, this is Mara from Sweden and you are blasting it up on the Metal Meltdown for Metal Messiah Radio with Dave Softy.
Alrighty, Metal Maniacs, here we go. Please help me welcome to Metal Messiah Radio, hailing from Gothenburg, Sweden. Joining us to talk about their fine melodic death metal band with elements of groove, thrash, and doom, and sharing with us the latest news about them from Mara. Joining us, we have one of the founding members, Dimitrios, on guitars and vocals, and new member, I've known this gentleman for a long time, Gunner on lead guitar. Welcome to the Metal Meltdown, gentlemen. Thank you for this opportunity, and a special thank you to Gunner, who had contacted me on Facebook so that we could set this up. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Uh, it's, it's my pleasure. I'm enjoying your music, and I'm just curious to know, in the state of the world as it is today and what we're living in, how has your experience been as far as dealing with this COVID situation? Well, uh, Sweden is uh, pretty has been pretty chill about it. Uh, nothing has been uh, closed down. There hasn't been a hard shutdown in Sweden. So uh, in the personal life, it's good, but uh, there's no shows or there's shows for 50 people sitting now. So it's been a rough year as an artist to yes. keep the live shows going. That's the that's the fact. That's the way it is around the world, even here in the states. I just had an interview recently, and it was the same situation. I mean, the max is like 50 people at a show. It's, it is what it is, right? Yeah, you have to keep going. I mean, it's uh, if you want to, if you want it bad enough, it's just uh, there's no obstacle that can get in the way. So we yeah, try that's to keep that well, in mind. At least. Really, you have to do the stuff that is possible to do, and. Uh, uh, recognize that uh, the situation is as uh, like it is. We just uh, try to focus on continuing with the band and uh, recording new stuff. And exactly, stuff exactly. Like that. That's that's the one you know good point of all this. Yes, you can't do shows like you'd like to, but you can create more music, which is the the good side of it, if you could say good side. But I'm really stoked to have you guys here today that we can learn more about Mara. I see that Mara formed in 2012 with your debut offering, Javel Stoner, which was released March of 2021 through Wormhole Death. And I understand the band has recent lineup changes, one of which is being that Gunnar has joined. That being said, would you be kind enough to inform the listeners on who makes up the band's lineup? In the year 2022. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's uh, me, Dimitrios, also on Yasis, on vocals and guitar. Uh, and then we have uh, Johan Alexanderson on bass, guitar, and backing vocals. And our drummer, Eric, just uh, his girlfriend just uh, got pregnant, so congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, or not, not just got pregnant. She's been pregnant for eight months. So she's going to have the baby like, in oh, a few days. Very so nice. We got a, yeah, we got a starting drummer, uh, Sebastian, who uh, is uh, really solid. At least I think so. I think the rest of the band agrees with me. To fill in for Eric while he takes parental leave. That's good news. And I also got her, as you said. Right. Yeah, I've known Gunnar since, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 years or so uh, when he was in the stain. And then he was also for a short time in Chugger. Uh, I've, I've had Chugger on the show quite a few times, uh, also from Gothenburg. And so it's great to have you guys here, like I said. How did Mara get its name? Who decided on that as a band's name? Well, it was uh, me and Eric who decided it, or we formed it. Uh, it's basically... Amara is basically a little entity in Germanic uh, folklore who beats nightmares into your chest while you are sleeping. And with the melancholy feel of the lyrics and also the uh, melodies that we use, we thought it was a great name. For that. It's actually That's a perfect funny. name, yeah. The way you describe that, it definitely fits the sound of your music, so I appreciate knowing about that. Thank you so much. And let's learn as much as we can about the making of Java Stoner. Uh, I've been listening to it a lot. I find it very addictive. I, I can't stop listening to it, actually. 
It has all the elements of, that, that I really enjoy in, in the music, and I appreciate this music so much. So let's learn all we can. Please tell us what studio this was recorded in, who is responsible for the mixing, mastering, mastering and producing Travel Storm. Uh, yeah, I'll answer that also then. Uh, we uh, we uh, recorded the studio in Italy at Real Sound Studio uh, during the, I think it was uh, the spring of uh, February to March 2019. We recorded the album uh, with uh, Christian and Waomi who runs the studio. And it's uh, Christian who is responsible for the producing at uh, Real Stone. And Waomi is responsible for the mixing of the album. And for mastering, uh, I contacted a friend of mine from uh, Örebro, where I'm from. Uh, his name is Ronnie, and he plays in his plays drums in uh, Dionysus a power metal band, but he's also a studio engineer. So he was responsible for the mastering. Excellent. It's amazing. Uh, if you want to record in the Italian countryside, the Real Style Studios, I can really recommend it. It was really, you had nothing to focus on other than music for uh, three, four weeks. It was really a good time during the uh, recording, at least. That sounds like a perfect situation for you. Yeah. Excellent. Who designed the cover art for Java Stoner and, and the band's logo? You had shared with me a variety of different looks of it, and you have a special uh, logo, I would call it. If you could tell us about who created this, I would appreciate that. Yeah, the the artist is named Helene Bremning, uh, and she, uh, together with me, designed the, the logo type and also the icon. Uh, the f- the, th- the thought about the logo and icon was basically um, for for the logo. I w- we want I wanted something that uh, was uh, solid, like uh, um, a Nordic rune almost. So it was it it looks like something that you can find in uh, the wild. Somebody has carved it into stone. Ah. And the, the same <laughs> the same thing for the icon that we also created. Which is basically, well, I don't know, should I go? I, I like to keep a bit of mystic in it, but if if you look at it carefully, I think you will figure out what the, the icon is. But it's uh, it's basically, that was what it is. And it also looks like uh, a rune from some sort of uh, magical rune. Almost. It looks very symbolic to me. It yeah. Definitely, yeah, it does. And she also designed the cover art. Very nice. Thank you. I for wanted, sh- I wanted the Grim Reaper slashing through the cosmos, but uh, it was. I don't think she was really keen on <laughs> on doing oh, that. So she, re- she oh, made really? that one. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought it was rip some cosmos and all these black entities come out. Yeah, that's a good I idea, think. though. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it for the next album. Next, exactly. And one of the most important things about these interviews is how to inform the listeners on how they could get the music and support Mara by getting merch. So I want to tell the listeners, I want to give them some links on how they can get the album and whatever other merch you may have. So let me give you a Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Mara Metal or Mara Metal Band. And then your website is maraofficial.se. And then you have your Bandcamp. It's marametal.bandcamp.com forward slash releases. You're also on Instagram, on Spotify, and I'm sure every Amazon and iTunes, probably every possible way they can find your music is easily accessible. Would you have any other links to add to that? I think that uh, if uh, you want to find us on uh, Spotify, for instance, you may have to uh, also search for some of the songs just to make you sure that you find the right Mara, because there yeah, are a few, uh, few other out there. But hopefully, 
uh, we are the only one in this genre. I did notice that when I was researching the band. So that was a very good point. Captain Sir, and, I think I I tried made it. Um, I tried it out and searched for Javel's tuner with an A instead of the Swedish A, and it uh, you you found it on Spotify at least, and I think you can do the same on Google and all the other places. So just like switch change the the Swedish uh, letter A to uh, American A, and you will find the album. That's what we have to hey. do anyway. It's very hard to do that otherwise. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, Dave, do you understand what the Apple's tuner means? I don't, actually. I just like the the name. <laughs> but no, please tell me what Javel's tuner means. Well, it Javel is devil and toner is tones. Devil's See, I, didn't, tone. I, I, had, I did not think that. I thought it meant something else. Like a, a javel, like something that you hold in your hand, you throw, and made of stone. That's what I thought it was. So thank you for telling me what it really is. I did not yeah. know. Sure. I, excellent. Well, wow, thank you for that. Sure. So what sort of merch do you currently have available for your fans? And do you have a plan on creating new merch for the near future? Well, we have a lot of stuff, but... uh I think uh, Demetrius is the one that should answer on this, but he because he is the man behind it, right? <laughs> the man, the man with the plan. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, yeah, we have um, a few tank tops. Uh, a few, I think we have two hundred. We um, we printed up uh, a lot of merch because we were going to go on tour with the Vader, uh, the Polish death metal band, during December. So we have a lot of merch that we printed for that tour that got postponed. Right. Um, and also a few uh, t-shirts. And I mean, we... The plan is always to create more merch. It's just that we want to... Uh, we would like to uh, sell off the merch that we have uh, um, before we create new merch. That makes but a lot of sense, of yes. Yes. I have a lot of designs ready to just print if, if we want to. So it's uh, there's there's a lot of uh, different uh, prints <laughs> ready. Yeah, I, I totally get you what you're saying. I totally understand that. And especially if you go to live performances and there's a lot more than 50 people, you have the chance to sell a lot more merch. But when you're limited to a certain amount of people, you're not going to move the merch as quickly as you, you can. So that's also always trying to spread the word about your merch that maybe people that are listening that are interested, they could actually get merch from you. Yeah, absolutely. Just uh, hit us up. I mean, if you if you don't want to order directly from the website, you can always write us uh, on Instagram or Facebook or mail us. Uh, I try to keep, uh, I try to answer within a few hours when people write to us just because I feel that the fans are the most important. And we can certainly work something out. Either I just we just send it to you, or uh, what preferred uh, delivery you want. We appreciate that and the information as well. And as we talked about this pandemic and how it's messed up the live performing part of the band, and you're limited to the amount of people that are at shows. Have you been able to do any anything over? The warmer months, let's say, to support the Java Stoner offering, and do you have any shows coming up that we can mention to the fans? Well, yeah, uh, we we try to keep active. Uh, we tried that uh, live stream thing uh, a few times, but it didn't feel right. I, f I feel it's almost a if you have to, because sometimes you just get that feeling that you have to stand on the stage. Then I think live streaming is good. But uh, it felt it didn't feel as good as standing in front of a live audience. But uh, because because of the pandemic and also because of the state of the um, metal scene in Sweden, uh, I felt that, that we had to because it, it was hard getting gigs when you don't have the biggest uh, network of people that you know. Um, so. We decided to almost take it into our own hands and contact a few uh, places and and play and set up our own shows 
so that's what we're trying to do is basically just create our own scene in in Gothenburg and in Sweden to play it. Yeah, that makes that's sense. That's what we've been trying to do. We've done a few, I think, five or six shows uh, during last year. So and, uh, there's not much, myself, but it's. Um, I've only been uh, on uh, one of these. Uh, it was in uh, November, I think. And uh, it was such a great feeling to finally be on stage again, you know, playing live. It's the best thing you can ever do for us uh, musicians, so we, we love it. We just love it, being there up and uh, having the fans uh, listening to the stuff you do. Uh, it's so great. And uh, of course, it was a uh, disappointment uh, that the tour with Vader was postponed, but nevertheless, it will happen. It will happen in the summer, I think. And we'll get more information about that uh, as, as we go on. We do have a planned show in Stockholm, uh, the capital of Sweden. It's uh, in the 5th of February. So it's not long uh, until we will stand on stage again. Excellent. And that Excellent. show, I think, uh, if you follow us on Facebook and stuff, I think the club actually live streams it. So we will post something there if you want to watch from home and uh, drink beers from home and watch uh, good metal. <laughs> That's a great idea, and so so basically, I just want to let the the audience that are, that's listening know that I wanted them to learn more about the band from the, its beginnings and everything, leading up to what led Gunner to join. I just want to talk about videos first, and then I want to get into what developed to have Gunner join Mara and and all that, and keep everybody up to speed. So basically. I just wanted to give a background information about the band because I feel that's very important because we're listening to this music and I want the people to know about it. So thank you so much for all the information so far. So let's talk about the videos that I found to uh, support this Java Stoner offering. I was looking on YouTube, on um, the Mora YouTube channel. Uh, I saw the Born to Die official music video and I saw the Blessed Shores official lyric video. What can we tell the fans about the making of these videos? Where were these videos filmed? Who was responsible for directing and editing these videos? And what does the future look like for future videos? I would imagine you're going to uh, not do any more videos for this particular release, but for future releases, I'm sure you will. Uh, yeah. Uh, Born to Die was filmed by a friend from of Eric's who works in uh, in movies. He films a lot of uh, television shows and films for Swedish uh, Film Institute. So uh, we told him, basically, I, I gave him a synopsis of what I thought the video should uh, contain. Uh, and he uh, he filmed it together with his two, I think his two children are the ones uh, are acting in the video. And uh, I don't know who edited it, but uh, it was someone through him. So he, he edited it and then he added some of uh, the live uh, videos that we have from a show that we did at Sticky Fingers in Gothenburg to get a sense of who was playing in the band. Uh, and uh, the lyric video actually I did myself. <laughs> so I oh yeah, very yeah. nice. Very nice. Are videos expensive for the band to make? Are you, even if you're doing it yourself, is it a costly venture? Uh, well, he actually did it for free for us. Uh, Beautiful and everything because he well, he likes to do stuff. Uh, so he. He did it for free, and uh, we only had to pay the editor. I think it was two thousand Swedish crowns or something. So that was great, and uh, we're really thankful to him. Uh, I don't. I think it 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 can get expensive depending on what standard you set. For him. And who you know, right? Like you had, like if you didn't have this gentleman do it for free, it would probably would have cost <laughs> you uh, a pretty penny. As they say. Yeah, because you still have to pay the actors. Uh, yeah, that would, yeah, I think it would uh, cost a bit, but uh, I think me and Gunnar have been talking, 
about uh, directing and filming our own videos for the singles that we are. Uh, very, very nice. That, well, that's perfect information right there. I want to talk about that now. We'll talk about gear in a little while, but let's talk about the reason why we're here. We're talking about the future of Mara. As uh, Gunnar had contacted me that he's in a new band, and he uh, suggested we get for an interview, and I really appreciate that, and I'm happy that we're here doing this. So what led to Gunnar joining the band, and what does the future look like for Mara? I did notice that you are planning on making some new music, hopefully for this coming spring, for it to be released. So let's talk about this. Well, for me, uh, joining the band, it was actually a colleague of mine who uh, saw the advert that Mara had put out, uh, that they were searching uh, for a guitarist to join uh, for the tour with Vader. Well, um, that's why. And uh, I... Uh, contacted uh, the drummer Eric and uh, we talked a bit and uh, we decided to meet I learned uh, first the two songs and we met and uh, they liked it so we met again I learned two more songs and uh, in three weeks I learned all uh, six songs that were supposed to be on the Vader tour um, it was really intense you know this music is intense it is complicated and intricate and very interesting guitar riffs, all of it. I love it. Uh, so I practiced a lot and uh, I'm happy that I could join the band like this. Excellent. I'm glad it's working out. Yeah. Yeah, we couldn't be happier. I mean, Gunner is uh, amazing. It's, uh, it can really breath new life into the band. Yeah, this is great. This is great news. So it makes the future of Mara look really promising as far as the new music. I can't wait to hear the new music when that's available. Yeah, uh, the new music. It's it's all, we're already working on. It. Uh, you know, as we uh, learned that the tour was uh, postponed, we wanted uh, to give us something more to uh, go on. You know, you can't give up just for something bad happens. You have to find new goals. So we decided to go in uh, to the studio and uh, we, the whole band, we were just jamming out for three days and we created completely new stuff. And it was a great experience. I think we, we, we did something uh, that's never been uh, heard before from Mara. It's uh, completely new. And we did uh, one complete song which is called Embers of Hades. And uh, we haven't decided uh, when it will be out, but it's coming soon, and I think you guys will be happy about it. I'm looking forward to hearing that. Yeah, you will. You will like uh, the stuff. And uh, we also did a re-recording of Retribution for the Crown, and uh, it was actually a quite... Uh, uh, heavy thing to do because uh, the tempo... You know, it got uh, quite much faster than uh, the pre previous recording. The drummer, he asked Demetrius, is this a good tempo? And uh, happy Demetrius said, yes, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. And, and uh, we uh, found out later that uh, it was uh, five uh, beats per minute faster than the old one. And it turned out that the uh, guitar riffs uh, were really, really hard to to nail in that tempo so we had to practice even more and actually we came up with an idea that if any of our fans can nail the guitar riff uh, in that tempo uh, which is uh, 150 BPM um, you, we, you, uh, you guys will win a t-shirt or a tank top yeah very Just, nice uh, yeah. Post your covers up on YouTube and uh, send a link to us. And uh, we, would, we really want to hear other people play it. It would be really great to see. And, That's a great uh, idea. The four of us will receive a t-shirt for a time of choosing. That's a great idea. So let me ask you, uh, as far as the possible opportunity to have a new full offering, are you 
working on more songs that you could actually have another full release? Or is that something that is taking a while to do? No, I mean, I've been writing music ever since uh, after we recorded uh, Javis Tuner. So I think I have about uh, five or six songs uh, that are completely ready. Great. Um, that just has to be rehearsed. And of course, I want everybody else to put in their personal touches on the music. And then I think we have about uh, five or six skeletons, as I call them. When you create a song, you have the skeleton and then you put the meat and bones on it afterwards that we are working on and trying to produce into full songs. Uh, and we have planned to go into the studio in December of 2022 to record our second album, actually. That's good news. And I just want to put it out there. Upon the completion of the new album, I would love to have both of you come back so that we could talk about the new album when that does happen. Yeah, sure. Yeah, great, great, great. 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 Oh, mine too. Just put on to what Gunnar was talking about. I think it's pretty much unheard of in metal. I don't want to sound uh, like arrogant, but uh, I think this whole thing, because what we did was actually we jammed for, for three days straight, and then we went straight into recording. So what you hear is basically a metal jam. We haven't, we have barely touched on it. It's the first ideas that just popped into our heads and the first follow-up riffs that we came up with, which is Embers of Hades. So I'm really stoked to hear when it's finally mixed and really hear how, how it sounds because I haven't heard any other band do it the way we did it. I agree so be because uh, ev everyone... Uh, we're contributing, everyone in the band, everyone was doing a great job. That's good news. So basically what you're saying is the natural flow between you, it was so natural that you see the future of making music to be very promising, which is an awesome situation. Yeah. yeah. That's good news. And gentlemen, would you like to talk about your guitars? I, I actually... When Gunnar had approached me, I was checking out his Facebook to find more information about the band and all that, and I see him playing a few guitars, and I'm like, wow, those look beautiful, but I'd like to know more about both of your guitars and, and your equipment. If you'd like to talk about that, I don't know if you'd like to talk about gear, but if you do, we'd love to hear it. Yeah, sure. sure. Uh, uh, Gunnar? Okay, I'll, I'll start <laughs> with uh, my guitar then. I have, for a very long time, as long as I can remember, almost uh, played on V-shaped guitars, you know, uh, not the flying V from Gibsons, but uh, from Jackson mainly, uh, the King V, and I like it because it's uh, it, it has this aggressive look, and uh, you know, if you play aggressive music, you need to have aggressive uh, weapons. That's what I've been playing. Um, but now that I joined Mara, it turned out that I had to uh, switch to seven strings. Uh, I tried first, uh, like the former guitarist uh, Anton, who uh, was playing in the band uh, on uh, six string. And he uh, sometimes uh, did this uh, drop tuning on the heaviest string, you know, um, for certain songs. And uh, I tried this... Uh, back and forth and finally came to the conclusion I need a seven string just as Demetrius has the seven string guitar. So I went on and looked for guitars and it was not so easy to find the one I wanted and finally I ended up with this solar guitar. Um, it's not completely exactly what I want but it it's, sounds great. I'm really happy with it, and it picks up the the harmonics great. So uh, doing the squeals and stuff like that, uh, it it works well. Excellent. Yeah. And Demetrius, would you like to talk about your guitars? Yeah, sure. Uh, I play on uh, Ran Custom. It's a Polish guitar company. Uh, and so I have a. It's a Flying V. Uh, looks almost like a, it's a BC Rich Flying V style with the devil's head on top of 
it or what you want to call it. Those who know how beast rich beast look like, they know the headstock of it. Right. It's a seven string with uh, camel patterns because I think there's nothing more metal than having camel. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it's beautiful. It's uh, such a great thing, especially when you play uh, more aggressive music. I think it's, uh, it just feels right. It feels like you're going out to war, and that's the way it should feel when you play this yeah. type of music. <laughs> right, absolutely. Right. And yeah. you, you can probably kill uh, vampires with those guitars, just smashing uh, <laughs> into the chest. <laughs> <laughs> that's and, great. Uh, of course, uh, it's also practical if you need to put down the guitar and do something with the the, the amplifier or something. It, it doesn't need a stand. You know, you can just put it on the V's and lean it against a wall or something. It's really practical like that. I wouldn't advise any kids to do that because it would <laughs> fall and break. But <laughs> if you want, <laughs> I never do that. I always put it in the stand because I'm really protective. All right, all right, yeah. Well, I thank you, gentlemen, for the, talking about your guitars. And uh, beyond Mora, are you gentlemen involved in any other bands or projects? Well, um, I have this uh, project called Solaris, but uh, it's uh, I'm laying low on that now. I put my focus on Mara. I I need uh, nothing else uh, at the moment. I like this band so much. Uh, we're doing a great job together, and I think uh, my main focus will stay on Mara for a long period of time, I think. Excellent. And I don't, uh, I, when you are disinvolved with a band, at least uh, for me, uh, with everything that comes with the band, uh, it's hard to find time to uh, have other projects. I so got I just you. I keep my main focus on Mara. Of course, I write some stuff uh, for myself only, but uh, that's uh, other music genre. M Mara is really your baby, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Good to know. Thank goodness that you have the music to keep you going when you're trying to do other things and may not go the way that you want. You have that music to concentrate on and create more music based on your life experiences. Yeah. Right? Gentlemen, would you like to say anything to the Mara supporters out there, to your fans? Anything you'd like to say to them? Well, for me, it's just uh, give us a shout out, uh, write to us, uh, like us. I mean, just take contact with us. Uh, I love to inter um, have an interaction with the fans. So it would be lovely to hear what uh, what you guys think about the music. And uh, just uh, especially during these days when we can't meet you out on the shows. So just feel free to write us a line and go to our Facebook page and uh, give us our, your support there. We really appreciate all the support we get for it's overwhelming actually how because I, I didn't think anybody would listen to the album and it has gone really well for a debut album for a band that nobody knows. So <laughs> thank you from the bottom of my dark heart. I'm sure more people will start learning more about Mara and uh, we really uh, that's the reason why we're doing this. We want to get the word out there and hopefully that will lead to better situations for yourself and the band. Do you have anything to say to the Mara supporters? Well, um, stay in there. We will be playing live more, and hopefully this uh, pandemic will uh, go away, and we will be out there again more and uh, more aggressive and more wonderful than ever before. Let's yeah, hope also, so. I remember Bug your uh, the local promoters. Just tell them to book us. We'll come and play for for you wherever you want us to play. We uh, we we are not picky. We just want to stand on the stage and play in front of people that enjoy real uh, real metal and enjoy. Are you willing to come to the states? Is that something that you're looking I would to do? Love to come to the states. Just give us a few months to prepare so we can search for visas and stuff. But I would love nothing better. I've actually been to Los Angeles uh, and Las Vegas, and I loved it there. So I would love to see the rest of the U.S. also. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I have to tell you, I'm enjoying the sound of your music as I know it so far. 
but I'm really looking forward to the future of your music and to check out what the new music sounds like when the time is ready and to be able to talk to you again about that. And I want to thank you for the opportunity to learn more about the band and having you both on the show really meant a lot to me. So thank you for, for being here. Uh, before we go crank up more music from Mara, I just want to make sure that we caught everyone up to speed. If there's anything else that you want to bring out to the fans that we have yet to do, please feel free to say anything that you want to. Uh, I can't come up with anything. <laughs> I think we did a good job. I think we <laughs> touched upon everything we can. I wanted to make sure everyone knew about the album, about uh, the making of the album, and what led Gunner to join the band and what the future looks like for the band. Yeah, I think you guys did a great job, and I definitely want to have you back on the show with every release that you have out there. I, I just want to let you know that you'll have my continued support, and I can't wait for this COVID to be over with so that you could live your dreams and, and perform and perform and hopefully get to the States. We, and you come to New York, and we could see you yeah. here in New York. Yeah, I would love that. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. We could do uh, uh, live on the radio show. Apartment. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> your studio. Oh yeah, right. That that would be something else for from Metal Messiah Radio headquarters in Florida. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, gentlemen, I want to thank you, thank you again for a great interview, with Demetrius and, and Gunnar. Uh, have a blessed New Year and be safe out there. And I hope all your dreams come true. I can't wait for COVID to be over, and I can't wait for your new music. Please stay safe out there. I wish you the best of success. And uh, keep doing what you do. And you know you'll always have a home here on Mental Meltdown to talk about your music. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, we love that you uh, you do the stuff that you do. You're great, Dave. Uh, I appreciate that. Your music's great. So let's go crank out more Mara. And I can't wait to hear more music from Mara with Gunnar wailing away on his guitar on that. We are Mara from Sweden. And we wish Metal Messiah Radio a happy 14th year anniversary. <laughs>